sold for the week of March 12 through 18 already. I can't believe it. Feels like time is just flying. And we're going to start off with some eBay sales. Most of the sales, I feel like I took a lot of offers this week. I took a lot of offers on Posh as well. Just trying to keep things moving, keep cash flow going. So there was a few highlights in the week of some pretty good sales. So we'll share those in a minute. This first one is Untuck It. Um, it is a men's brand, a shirt brand mostly as far as I can tell. Maybe some jackets as well. And they do pretty well. I've had a couple shirts that for some reason, like I did really well with Untuck It. It sells pretty quickly, not super high. Um, I think things slowed down a little bit during pandemic because it is very much a, like a business casual kind of look. And, um, and then it was picking up again, but I had these two shirts not this one, but a couple other ones listed. And I think I sold one maybe last week or the week before, and I might have mentioned this, that they just sat forever. And I think it was because the size was a medium. I still have one of those, and I just won't give up on it yet. <laughs> but this one we listed, we're kind of working through our profit pile, and the gingham is probably fairly popular. And then also it was a um, extra large. So it sold pretty quickly, like a day or two for $25. This was some, these are some books. We were cleaning out my kids' bookshelves and my son decided he was pretty much done with these. So my goal on children's books lot, book lots, unless they're like really good, like these were kind of worn. I just picked them up at thrift stores. Um, they So they weren't in the greatest shape, but I just wanted to basically get my thrifting money back. So somebody sent us a $20 offer and we went ahead and took that. This was a corduroy um, shirt jacket or shacket. Um, kind of, I believe it was vintage, you know, maybe 90s Y2K kind of look Liz Sport. I don't know if they're still doing anything anymore. Um, so more Y2K, I'm sure. But it was nice. It had a nice wide whale to the corduroy. So it would make a really good jacket. Um, it got a lot of interest in a lot of places. But it finally took the right person to want it. And we sold it for $24. This is a good brand to keep an eye out for for Western shirts. It's called Ryan Michael. And I think the shirts might all have silk in them. But this was, it was kind of tiny. It had a really cool um, whip stitch kind of style around the pockets and around the yoke. And it sold quickly, not for a super high amount. This is a woman's shirt. It was a woman's small. It was corduroy as well and it sold for $20. It turned out in the feedback that I got that um, I think it was a buyer also in Montana, so it got to her fairly quickly and she wore it to St. Patrick's Day. So wasn't exactly what I was thinking of when I listed it, but it worked for her and it got to her quickly enough to do that. So then this shirt is a chambray shirt as you can see, I did not spend a whole lot of time pressing it or anything. <laughs> um, so someone, whoever bought it, will have to do that. The brand is Everlane. This can be a fairly good brand for jeans. Um, this was a chambray shirt. And I don't show the inside. Well, you can kind of see it in that part a little bit. But... Denim, the, knowing the difference between denim and chambray, denim is usually a different color on the reverse side, and chambray is the same color on, on either side. So that's just a quick way to know which word to use in your listing, but definitely has a denim look. Um, I think I bought this thinking maybe it was women's, but it turned out to be men's. Size large, and it sold for... 
sixteen ninety nine. I just took an offer on that as well. I don't know that I would pick that up again, but it did sell fairly quickly. Tommy Bahama. One day I got a couple pairs of Tommy Bahama um, shorts at the thrift. Kind of the dad-looking uh, pleated golf short look. And these were size 32. They were 90% silk. And they sold for $25. So this was one of our best sales of the week. Carhartt, okay, so pants, jeans, like dungaree, you know, work pant kind of things. So not all Carhartt pants are going to be worth $125, but these were vintage. They were made in the USA. Um, again, when you're looking at Carhartt, you want to look at this number down here. So the B138, you know, there's all different codes. And then the those letters that come next, the CGR is like the color code. So whether that's charcoal gray or something like that, you know, it usually makes sense. The other thing that you want to look for on Carhartt pants that is popular right now is this, they call it double knee. So I have a funny story. I was at a thrift store last week and um, a bunch of high school kids, boys came in and, you know, they were loud and boisterous and everything and they're thrifting and the lady, it was like a private thrift store, not a Goodwill or anything. And so she's like, oh, hey guys, oh, they must be regulars. She's like, I've got some car hearts in. And so they were so excited and I happened to be at the uh, men's pants rack and I just got like surrounded <laughs> by these boys and I had seen the Carhartts right as I heard her say that but none of them were double knee so I you know I wasn't super interested in them they weren't vintage or anything so I was just kind of looking and sure enough the kids come and they're like oh Carhartt oh here's Carhartt oh Carhartt and they're like double knee double knee double knee right so that's obviously the look that people are looking for and you know they they were funny they just they wanted the look right now is really baggy so they just wanted big oversized too big for them pants that they could wear so it was kind of interesting listening to them and I could see the trends that I had I've researched and I've heard about but it's a, a group of kids like they didn't have any money they hardly had any money um, and they were super excited because pants at that thrift store were like $2 that day. So I don't know what they ended up with, but they were super excited about that. So it just kind of gave me a little insight into the trend. So it just cracked me up when they were all like double knee, double knee. <laughs> uh, so funny. Anyway, so $125 for that pair of pants. Then I found, I, I had sold some corn silk, new old stock. These are vintage from the 90s. Um, I had sold a couple packs, if you've seen my what solds before. One, one set was, I think I got $50 for. It had a slightly different formula. And then the other one was kind of like this one, I believe. And I got like 35 or 40 for that one as well. And so I just went ahead and put this up for 40. I found it at the th same thrift store, but it was like a month or so later. And, um, two of two out of the three went overseas. So I thought that was interesting. So you never know discontinued, you know, I got good feedback on both of the other sets. So I'm assuming, you know, everything was okay inside and this is just kind of like a powder, so it's not like a liquid that can go weird or anything. And um, yeah, so discontinued old types of, you know, health and beauty type, type things. Sometimes people are still looking for them because they, that's what they used and that's what they're used to using. Okay, this is a little thimble rack. Uh, the artist on the little plaque there is Joan Walsh. England, you might see, have seen, let's see, I don't know why it's popping it down so far. That's weird. 
Anyway, love is the golden thread of life. So maybe you've seen her artwork before. And there would be four thimbles that go with it. And I didn't have those. So I had gotten a bunch of thimbles that I still have not listed. Um, but this was in there. I just decided to throw this up by itself. But this was like last summer. Could have been longer ago than that. So it's been listed a while. It was at a yard sale. Could have been two years ago, two summers ago. Yikes. But anyway, I got an offer for this for $12.50. And I said, you bet. <laughs> you can have it. So she, she had me measure the little dowels. She has small fingers and wanted to make sure her small thimbles would fit on that. So hopefully that worked out for her. Um, so $12.50. This dress was by ASOS. It was new with tags. The only problem is that one of the covered buttons was uncovered. Um, it didn't sell for 39. It sold for 32. And I just had to answer a couple of questions, which was fine, even though the information was in the listing, but I don't think they had scrolled through all the photos to, you know, to see all the tag information that ha I had in my pictures. So you just never know what people are going to look at. They're either going to look at description and not photos or only photos and not description. Sometimes you can't win, but once I answered her questions, she went ahead and bought it. So that worked. I found a lot, a couple bags of Hello Kitty or Sanrio, vintage Sanrio items a while back. A lot of little stationary pieces and I've done okay. I, okay, well, I haven't done that great. I've gotten like three quarters of them listed. I kind of got bored. Um, and I decided to split it up to try to list it all separately. I thought I would make more money that way. I have gotten, this is the only thing that sold so far. <laughs> so this is Choco Cat, who's one of the really popular um, Sanrio characters. Super cute. And it wasn't a complete, complete set, but it wasn't terrible. And it sold, you know, I had some lowball offers and it sold for $15 plus shipping. So that's fine. I put these also over on Depop where there's a big Hello Kitty um, following over there. And I got tons of, no, Depop. Did I say Depop? Tons of interest, just no one wanting to pay what I'm asking or even making a reasonable offer. So, so we'll see. I, I see, I had almost originally just lot it, wanted to lot up all the Hello Kitty stuff. So I might still end up doing that depending on, unless I can get any of the other pieces to sell. And most things i just have them listed between 10 and 15. And then a couple that are super complete, I went ahead and did 25. There weren't comps on some of them. And these are definitely vintage, not newer. They're definitely Y2K era. Some of them have dates right on them. So I might just need to continue to, um, wait for my, you know, wait for the buyer. Like this one was a full price sale. They didn't even make an offer. So that was nice. This is just a kind of a weird thing. My husband picked up at our little bins. It's by Eagle Creek. It's a packet system. It's a way to fold up your clothes in luggage. And, um, you know, a lot of times see there's some examples or some sheets on how to do it. And sometimes, you know, my husband will just grab things like our bins are not by, by weight. They're not by the pound. It's just a tiny little clearance center. And they basically just either eyeball and give you a price or like if you could fill up a huge black trash bag, the black trash bags are $10 and a smaller bag is like $5. So today, I mean, today I had... I went there today and I found a bunch of stuff and it would probably f fit in one of the half size bags for five, but she just looked at it and said, how about $4? So 
So that's kind of the system we're dealing with. So a lot of times we just grab stuff. We don't look it up. We just grab it. And then, you know, with the number of things we're getting, we're paying pennies for things. And then we just see if it's worth anything. So this was one of those items. My husband came home with like two trash, two black trash bags one day. And, you know, we went through, we sorted, we got rid of some of the stuff. And then um, we looked this up and thought, you know what, this probably is worth listing. So it did. It only took a couple days and it sold for $25. This was a purse. This is a brand that you should be on the lookout for. For purses, it's Anushka, A-N-U-S-C-H-K-A. Um, they're hand painted. You can see the pretty pattern on this. This was called Dreamy Dahlias. And then on the back, you see the signature Anushka. And this was in fairly good condition. It would have originally had like a makeup bag or a little cosmetic type thing hooked onto there. But it was just this and it was nice and clean. This I picked up from another reseller on Instagram who just had, I guess, I'm trying to remember what she said back then, um, just bags she she wasn't getting around to listing, so she was just trying to clear some things out. So I bought that from her. And then this took about a month or so to sell. And I had it listed a little bit higher, but I took an offer for $95. Kubota. So I don't know what happened, but, you know, it's kind of interesting. I found this Kubota hat not that long ago, my son and I, and you know, it's got a nice camouflage by Realtree on it and Kubota, the heavy machinery, you know, that's a popular thing too. And, um, so the hat, it was great. This hat, my husband looked at it and was like, Oh great. This will be an easy list. And I had forgotten, like I knew I had gotten Kubota hats before, but a while back at the Goodwill, there was a day I ended up picking up a, a bunch of hats one day. And a lot of them, I guess, were Kubota, like four or five. So I think we had sold one, but the rest were still listed. So he just did a sell similar. So this one sold like within a few days for $25. And then you'll see them in next week's solds. But like the same weekend, we sold like two more Kubota hats. So it was either... It was either the eBay, mysterious eBay ways of selling one type of item and then they kind of push those similar type of items out there. Or I told my, my husband, I said, you know what? I wonder if there was something on like TikTok <laughs> or somebody was wearing a Kubota hat and now everybody wanted one. It was just kind of odd. They The other ones had been sitting for a few months, right? And all of a sudden we sold like three Kubota hats in one weekend. Okay, and the other hat we sold, perfect timing for this. The Masters is usually right at the beginning of April. So we do try to get any Masters themed items that we find throughout the year. Definitely have them listed um, before the beginning of April. I found this the other day. Um, I think it was. it's a little bit older. And um, for being white, it was actually in pretty good condition. And that one sold also for $25, so full price for that. Let's go over to Posh. I sold a pair of Vionic, these Vionic sandals, took an offer for $22. That was like the, you know, I, I didn't have that many sales throughout the week on Posh, but then the weekend hit, I was doing some like, delisting and relisting and tweaking and moving things around and stuff. And I shared a bunch. And so I did end up with a bunch of sales like in one day, but it was mostly toward the end of the week, but people were, I was sending offers and they were countering and I was like, yes, whatever. <laughs> so I just went ahead and took offers. Like I said earlier, just to kind of keep the cash flow going. This hat sold for $13. It's just a vintage camo um, 
you know, with the pine forest kind of style, nothing super special about it. And, but it was nice that it sold pretty quickly on posh. Again, just a pair of basic golf shorts for 15. This dress or skirt was by Cabby, which can be an okay brand. It was new with tags and I got a $21. It's from a few years back, but I got a $21 offer. So I went ahead and took that. This was a mistake to buy. I know some people can sell Zaya and other people can't sell Zaya. And I've sold a few pieces here and there. And so I saw the hat and I was like, oh, somebody's going to want that. And then I looked him up and I was like, ugh, I should not have gotten it. But I will say once I put it on Poshmark, then it did sell fairly quickly. And someone sent me a $10 offer and I knew it was not going to sell well on eBay either. So I just said, yes, $10, that's totally fine. I wouldn't buy it again. This was a vintage, it was pretty cool. It was a vintage, you know, it looks like a baseball hat, but it did have ear flaps and it was kind of like a warmer, you know, fleece lined ear flaps. And it was vintage K brand, which is nice when you find vintage K brand made in the USA. Hats can be really good. And then the front was like a seed company. So we went ahead and took a $20 offer on this. I think we had it listed closer to 30, but the same buyer had already bought this from us for $30. So that was totally fine. We just took that offer. This is Carhartt. It's a big, heavy sweatshirt, but it did have embroidery, you know, on the side. So we were totally fine taking a $30 offer on that. And then we sold this Peter Millar shirt. Again, it had a logo down here on the cuff for a local golf course. So I don't know that I saw that when I bought it, but at least it's just on the cuff. It's not a huge deal. And we just went ahead and took $15. It's a button shirt. It's not technically like a golfing shirt. So some people just like Peter Millar clothing anyway. And I guess that was it for Poshmark. Now we're moving over to my husband's Etsy shop. He had a pretty good week. Metal and Tweed is the name of his Etsy shop. And these, you know, he came and shopped my inventory and found these little um, candlestick holders, candle holders by Itala. And this pattern is called Fest Festivo and they come in all different sizes and it's really cool if you can find like the whole graduated set. So I just had these two short ones. I think I got them at a yard sale last year and they sold for 45 and they have the little stickers. So anyway, one of our favorite types of glassware to sell it and a good brand to look for as well, Itala. The little sticker is like a, a little, let me see if I can show you. Someday, yikes. Here we go. Made in Finland and it's like a little eye on red. So you can look for that. And then these bookends, I also picked up at a yard sale last year, sold for 14, they're by Odagiri. And then another yard sale find, I remember this yard sale, it was so fun, it was an estate sale and it had a bunch of like five and dime stuff, vintage five and dime stuff for like five, well, like 10 cents or whatever. And I just picked up this little, um, it's by Toastmark, right? And you basically, when you make toast, you can like imprint good morning into your toast. <laughs> anyway, kind of funny. $12. And then again, I just love stuff like this that you wouldn't, you know, uh, you know, a lot of people are going to pass this by at the thrift store because they have no need for it. But because of the World Wide Web, we have people who were like, hey, cool, something I can keep my cassettes in for my car, right? 
And you're not going to find this at a store new. You need to find a vintage one. So it sold for $25, and I just spent a couple bucks on it at the thrift store. This was a fairly good size wall hanging. It hung over our bed for a long time, possibly a little scary now that I think about it, because it looked like it would not feel good if it landed on you. But it's, you know, just metal. It's unsigned or anything like that. And it, you know, the sunburst kind of look with the birds. And I just, I picked it up at a thrift store somewhere along the way back in the day. And it is a little intimidating to ship. So we did have it hanging in various places in our house for a while. And then my husband decided to go ahead and list it. And he got $75 for it. And he's due to ship that out today. Well, tomorrow, it'll go out tomorrow. Um, he had to go double, get some cardboard at, um, anyway, one of the places he keeps his, his work stuff. He's got some cardboard there. So he was going to take care of that tonight, but I'm glad he's going to ship it and not me. And I don't know why it keeps going there. Okay. So I don't think there was another sale in his shop. No, not last week. Okay. So this is the Ruby Lane sale for the week. It's just a, um, it was neat. It was marked 1905. And so very Art Nouveau fits right in there. It's silver plated, but it had a ton of brass showing through. So the condition was not great, but it still sold for $25. So that's just something to keep in mind. I mean, yeah, when things are that old, you're not going to find many other ones. And it's got a beveled mirror, which is really nice, a nice touch. And you can see it right in there, the patent date, June 13, 1905. I just love holding old stuff. Okay, moving over to the pattern shop. This pattern, if you keep an eye out for it, I actually found another one today. I was so excited in the, the bins where I told you I paid $4 for this pile of stuff. Um, there were sewing patterns again today. There had been sewing patterns the last time I went and I got a bunch and then I went today and they were more. So that was exciting. And um, I looked through a bunch of it, grabbed some more, and then I couldn't believe it. There was another one of these. Now this, this one sold for $27. McCall's 3760. It's just a very consistent seller. I've sold two in the last couple weeks or month or whatever. And the last two I've had were cut, but they were complete or at least partially cut. And so I just popped it at $27. So the one I found today is, is factory folded. It's uncut. So I think my selling price for that is 35. I might, I might do the math on that a little bit because I do have it set up in my shop that the buyer gets free shipping. Um, anything over thir uh, $35 and over. So with shipping being around $4, I'm going to like do the math and see what's the best way to do that. So anywho, that's one to keep an eye out for. McCall's 3760 Country Rabbits. I sold this Vogue pattern, DKNY, for $12. And then this one just sold for 14 It's another Vogue, a little bit of a newer one. And that sold for 14 And then this was a vintage pattern. The brand is Ann Adams. It's considered a mail order pattern. Why are these photos? These photos are taking forever to load. That's crazy. Okay. Um, so they are mail order patterns where back in the day, you know, you could order, there would be ads in the newspaper and you can order a pattern. And so this is what somebody did. They cut the picture out of the newspaper and they glued it to the front of the envelope so they knew which pattern was inside of here. And that just sold for $12. Some of these, 
mid-century patterns I've sold for a lot more depending on the size. This was just a, a 32 bust size pattern. But I had gotten my hands on some of these mail order ones that were, were larger. And those have been selling really well. 20, 25, 30, sometimes more depending on the style. Then I actually have a couple things to share on Depop from Depop. This week I sold this vest. Um, it was a made in the USA. Planet X was the brand. This cropped kind of denim vest, very 80s. But the nice thing about it was that it was a plus size. Um, it's, you know, Mark 3X, but I just gave the measurements for that. And that sold for $26 plus shipping. And then these didn't sell for 30. I think they sold for 22. Basically the buyer wanted um, free shipping because I, I popped those in a padded mailer for about eight. So, you know, that chunky look, even in sandals seems to be doing well. These were by uh, Born, but it was their BOC um, line, the Bach. I forgot what it stands for. Something I don't remember. But the main company is Born. And so I had a couple of people ask me if it was men, men or women sizing. And from what I figured out with my research is that BOC is just women's shoes. Born shoes can be both men and women's, but the Bach line, I think, is only women's shoes. So, you know, I had measurements and all this. When someone, you know, offered me the 20, oh, you know what? I'm wrong about that. Someone offer. okay, so this is the thing about Depop. People send you offers. And so it would show the $22 if that's what it had sold for. See, look, it had 30 likes. They were really popular. Um, someone offered me 22. I accepted, but they did not pay. And that's normal. That's like offers are not binding at all on Depop. So I think someone else just came through like a day or two later and just paid full price for them. So that was actually better than I remembered. <laughs> and then last but not least is the Etsy shop. Again, it's kind of hard to show you, but I had somebody buy three more uh, utensils from this list. And I really only have two things left in the in this variation listing so I'll have to decide what to do with that whether to just kind of pull the two items and make a couple listings or just leave it you know until the pieces sell um, so someone bought one of the turning forks a slotted spoon and a spreader and the total was about $38 from what I remember on that so that was a good deal. That was a good sale. Anyway, how were your sales this past week? Is It's kind of a tough time of the year for reselling. Um, I always, over the years of doing this, it slows down a bit in March and then the beginning of April because of tax season. I remember back in the day I used to work as a sign language interpreter and I worked in the school system. And I always had a spring break right around the beginning of April. And I would be like, oh, good, I'm going to I'm going to sell stuff on eBay that week. And it would be so dead and it would be so like depressing. <laughs> and then every I'd be like, oh, it's because of tax season. It's because of tax season. So either people are waiting on their refunds or they owe money, you know, so they're not buying a lot of extra things. Um so I don't know. Our week was about average, I think, but definitely whether it's the recession or whatever, you know, we definitely had to send out either aggressive offers or just go ahead and accept offers in order to make, make our good sales. So hopefully you guys had a good week and we will see you later on this week. Thanks so much.